<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. It's a Thursday edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. That means it's theater throwback time, and uh, I figured after seeing the uh, newly rebooted version of this comic franchise, what better thing to do than in our theater throwback to go back to the original, the one helmed by Guillermo del Toro starring Ron Perlman. Uh, one of my favorite film adaptations uh, character-wise, I just I love these two movies that del Toro does. And this first one uh, really set the tone for this character and to date still does. Uh, as we can see, you know, the way people are talking about the new one and the comparisons. I mean, this is a movie that has stood the test of time for comics. So uh, why don't you pull up a chair, man, take a seat. We're hopping into the old time machine, taking it all the way back to 2004. Diving in spoiler free into Hellboy. Oh man, I, I tell you, like I said, this is this is a movie um, that right away I was just like, oh, he made me a big fan of this character, uh, Ron Perlman's performance, and what Guillermo del Toro delivers um, from a story and just a visual perspective. It just made me fall in love with the whole Hellboy character, start to finish. And you know, if you're looking at these movies, you know, now with the rebooted one out and, and these originals, the things that stand out with this is. All driven by Guillermo del Toro, man. Uh, he just shoots a wonderful movie. His vision is beautiful. His writing and you know the way he makes the camera move and the way he develops these characters, it's at the level of you know an Oscar caliber director. And even though you know he hadn't won one by that at that point in time, um, you could see all the things that make Guillermo del Toro great throughout the whole movie. Um, and when you have a master class person like that behind the camera, you really can develop this amazing adaptation. Um, and it starts with just like little things, man. Like he creates these absolutely beautiful images in the movie. I mean, when you're watching, there's a shot of Hellboy in the rain holding a um, a rosary. That's like you just sit there and you're like, God, man, that's gorgeous to look at. Like if you freeze frame that, oh man, what a beautiful image. Um, same thing when uh, Hellboy and Liz later on in the movie are engulfed in her blue flame and you're just like, oh my gosh, man, like look at that. Um, or Rasputin, uh, you know, when he's re-summoned uh, after his initial appearance in the movie, he comes up uh, like through this uh, pool of blood and that that just image, it's so striking. It's stuff that just sticks in your brain and something that Del Toro is so good at. Um, and the other thing that makes a lot of the stuff stand out in this movie uh, are his practical effects. I mean, whether it's Pan's Labyrinth, whether it's Shape of Water, which kind of has a strange tie to this movie, um, Del Toro is so good at creating these monsters. And his practical effect monsters are wonderful in this movie. Um, Rasputin creates uh, a creature that, uh, you know, basically births two of itself every time it's killed, uh, this Samael. Um, and it's just a fascinating thing to watch. And the blending of the CGI when it's moving, like, super fast or on the walls or flying around um, with its practical image and costume, and it's, it's wild to look at, you know, and these creatures are just all unique and they all have a very del toro you know flair and spin to them and samuel is certainly one of those um even when you go to the cgi monsters uh, the behemoth we get at the end of the movie um has a lot of comic accurate feels and looks to certain things um but you know del toro makes it feel believable in this world you know um he's all cgi and kind of sets up toward the end to face off with hellboy um but you just sit there and you're just like wow man like that's beautiful to look at uh the same thing goes for the agdru uh jihad which we see uh you know up in you know this other realm at one point they're just kind of massive they kind of remind you of some of the creatures that come out of the avengers movies um the same thing when they're on screen the way he just shoots you know has it shot you know in the cgi realm you just sit there and you're like wow man that's so beautiful and then when you get to like our big time characters you know not just these monsters they still look fantastic. Uh, the Carl Ruprecht Cronin. Um, what a fascinating character, man. He really captures uh, the comic look of him. Um, and then does the thing that you wouldn't think to do. Have him remove his mask. Show his face. All the surgeries and things he's done. You know, this great Nazi scientist. What he's become at this point. And the way he moves. Um, you know, and he's got these swords. And, the you know, the guy who plays him just nail so many things that you're just like you're just captivated by what you're looking at image wise um and then you know our two uh you know protagonists abe sapien so cool it's so hard not to see the fish god from shape of water when you're looking at abe sapien but 
Abe came first, and uh, he he is just so wonderful looking. You know, you get the feel of the comic, um, but he just has all these little things that Del Toro can do with a creature um, that just make him fascinating. The way he moves and the way Doug Jones plays him uh, just works so well. And you just sit there and you look and you're like, wow, man, this is like, I believe that character is there. It's not just a costume, he's really there. Um, and again, uh, Del Toro does a really good job of merging it with the CGI stuff so that when he's underwater, you really believe that he is a fish man. Um, and he just, he looks wonderful. And then, of course, Hellboy. And one of the things that I really praise the new movie on is taking that, you know, look and that prosthetic feel and practical effects from the original Hellboy and really building on that. But the original Hellboy, though, set a really wonderful foundation of what you could do and how to how well Del Toro captures uh, the imagery of Hellboy and the look of Hellboy. Uh, it really works, uh, you know, and Perlman is just the perfect fit for that character. And, and then even when you're taking Hellboy, you know, to the next level where his horns appear, and something that I love so much in the new version, um, again, it's just something that works so well in this version. Um, it is always exciting to see the horns grow, the, the crown of fire kind of sit on top of his head, and something that, you know, I think Del Toro captured so well that it set a wonderful precedent for how to utilize it later on in other films. You know, so the practical effects are wonderful and everything that Del Toro does just works. And then when you look at the story and how he works that, man, he adapts, uh, you know, the first Hellboy book, uh, Seed of Destruction, that's the, the one that he pulls the most from, uh, and takes that story and works it and shapes it into something that he has a masterful control of and, and he is in control of start to finish and you feel that the way he can tell a story is just something that the tour is so good at but he can deliver really comic accurate moments without focusing so hard on making it everything feel like it's right off the page um you know you have to be able to tweak a story to make it work within a movie and while the new one struggled at that that's something that del toro was so good at yet he holds true to things man um you know the seed of destruction we get hellboy's birth and that's adapted really really well here on screen um you know and the things that he does and just building that out visually you're like wow man that looks wonderful and it, and it feels like something i'm familiar with uh the way that he uses rasputin to do the summoning and you know how he brings hellboy forth and then needs hellboy to create the end of the world um by awakening the Agdru Jihad, which are you know trapped in these like crystal cases in this uh, other you know on the other side of this portal, um, and you know there's a shot of them in the crystals. One of the shots it is directly like right off the page, but you know again that's not the focus. He uses um, Mignola's story, you know, to help him tell his story, and uses Mignola to to make sure things fit and work right, like you're putting together a puzzle. Um, Right down to the fact that, like, yeah, he tweaks stuff within the way certain things go down, uh, specifically with uh, Trevor Bruton home, uh, Dr. Broom, who's essentially Hellboy's father. You know, what happens to him, it, it's different than the comic, but the concept of having Hellboy and Liz and Abe kind of investigate what happens to Dr. Broom um, feels and just looks right. So the way that Del Toro is able to do that sets himself up for something that feels really comic accurate, gives us some moments, but works in a different adaptation to take different parts of the Hellboy universe and create a story that feels true to the you know what the source material is. Um, he also delivers pretty solid action. I think this is probably the spot where he stumbles the most. Um, you know, unless it's Carl Rupert Cronin um, and the, just what he's able to do with his body and those swords. Um, you know, a lot of the action, it, it's good, um, you know, and it's fun, uh, but it's not the strongest thing that del toro does and i think some of the sequences could have been bigger it's one of the things i think the new movie does do a little bit better than the original in delivering these big massive action set pieces but what del toro does give you is fun um you know the first time hellboy runs into uh the samael uh in the train station like that sequence is really really cool um but by the time you get to the end and you want that big action sequence when he takes on that behemoth, um, you know, it's a little bit quick and it's CGI driven and you're like, nah, it's not as good as I think some other things have been. But one thing that is certainly really good and really helps this movie be a fantastic movie is a really great set of performances uh, that Del Toro just has, you know, at, at his fingertips. Ron Perlman, just fantastic as Hellboy. You know, you want to immediately compare like, oh man, like him and David Harbour, but I don't do that, man. I look at them as two people who have totally captured the essence of the character in different ways, very much like we've seen so many different people capture the Joker. And Ron Perlman was the first, so he, so he's, you know, he's in your head the most, um, and he's the one that feels like 
Hellboy the most because he was the first one. But he really does. He he gets who Hellboy is. He looks the part. He acts the part. Um, you know, he gets his sense of humor and his sarcasm mixed with his action and brooding. Um, and just all the little things that kind of make Hellboy really pop. And Perlman delivers it really, really well in that charismatic, charming way that Ron Perlman, you know, can deliver anything. Uh, it's just so well suited for, for Hellboy that... He did. He, he set an iconic performance for a character that you'll always be the bar. Um, and it was something that I loved watching David Harbour strive for and achieve in a different way. Um, Doug Jones, who plays Abe Sapien, loved him. Uh, I think he, again, is someone who understands who the character is, looks the part, obviously, because of the makeup, but feels the part. You know, you feel like he's captured the essence of Abe, and when he's on screen, I enjoy watching him interact with Hellboy, um, and I enjoy interact seeing him interact, you know, underwater or in some of the small action set pieces that he gets. Um, and I really did. I just, I, I really loved Doug Jones's performance. I thought he he crushed it as Abe Sapien. And then, you know, our third uh, of our trio, Selma Blair, um, just absolutely wonderful. I, I I've always been a big Selma Blair fan. You know, back from this time period, she was in a lot of movies back then. Um, you know, she just she knows how to to do things subtly, man. Like, like Liz is very quiet in the way that she works in the movie and that subtleness to her character and the way that she's a little off plays really well into the things that she struggles with, with controlling her powers. Um, I thought it was something that Selma Blair does so subtly, but just so wonderfully, even if it is a softer performance, she really commands the screen when she bursts in the flame. Um, so I thought she nailed that stuff. Um, and I loved watching her interact with Perlman, uh, her interactions with Hellboy. Uh, they're just so genuine and wonderful. Um, you just love watching that, you know, relationship develop, even in this just subtle kind of soft way, um, in the midst of this big, you know, heavy, horror action kind of spectacle uh, and i loved watching her kind of do all that and then you know you get really nice performances from john hurt rupert evans carl roden uh and jeffrey tambor to just kind of round out this cast to deliver the material in in a way that just makes this thing work start to finish you're never not being entertained you're never not on board with where the movie is going uh and it just makes this first hellboy you know from 2004 really really enjoyable and it set a really high bar that you know, it's hard to compare to when you do something that the fans love so much. And this is one of those movies that you just come out and you go, oh, man. You know, so to get my first experience with Del Toro, to be in a realm that I'm so familiar with, uh, this is a movie that, that just has a special place uh, for me. So I really dug the 2014 original version of Hellboy. The question is, did you? Uh, I want you to hit those comments down below, man. Let me know all the things that you love about this Hellboy. I mean, this is a really, really good one. Um, so I want to know what you loved about. What didn't work, though, if you didn't think it was all great? Or if you liked it more or less than the new version? Um, let me know everything you're thinking about this one down below as always if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and if you're new here and you want to come join along on all the c-man fun go hit that subscribe button and then the little bell that follows so you get alerts every time i make a new video for c-man's cinema sit down i'm c-man and i'm signing off peace well well if you aren't still here looking for something else to check out that's c-man related why don't you check out a video like this guy or this guy and if you really want to help the c-man out in year two Hit that subscribe button and come join the cinema sit-down squad, kids. You know what to do. See ya.